space-time diagrams, an introduction. Einstein developed up a theory about space, and it was about time to get in space and time. I love all these memes about Einstein. They make me smile. Okay, so we can't draw. I mean, it's difficult to draw in four dimensions. I don't know how to do it. So we have X, Y, Z. Those are the three sort of dimensions you're used to. But there's also time. See, Einstein proved and showed that there has to be four dimensions. So it's, that's why they call it space-time. Space because of X, Y, Z, and then the time part. So instead, what we do is we take the three-dimensional part, the X, Y, Z, and we collapse them into just one dimension. So we just call that just X. And then we can draw these space-time diagrams to show what happens to stuff. Now, sometimes they're called Minkowski diagrams or space-time diagrams. Same, same. Okay, so these are here. These are fine. You can just call them that. So normally you'd think, hey, we should go X and then T, but we don't do that, actually. It turns out this is not how we draw them. Instead, we add this CT. Now, I talked about this in another video, but let's just make sure we do it here uh, just properly. So why do we do this? I mean, it's important in relativity. It makes things later a lot easier. Uh, but it turns out, first of all, we want things to both have the units of length. So let's just look at this. So CT, let's just look at its units here. So the units of C would be in you know meters per second, and the units of T would be in the seconds. And of course, what happens then? The S's cancel out, and you end up with just units of meters. So that has units of length. And then it turns out, well, x, of course, will just have units of meters as well. So to see they're both actually the same. Now it also helps because what we call a world line of a photon, it's 45 degrees from both axes. So let me show you that, what I mean by that. So this right here, uh, turns out this would be, I'm just trying to make it about 45 degrees, something like that. This right here is probably 45. It looks like it at least. So is this. That's only, you know, that's because I've chosen to do a CT like this. This is a photon or a piece of light. And that means its speed is equal to C. So what does this really mean? Well, that means, you know, we can say that there's an equation here that goes CT equals X. You know, you remember your uh, Y equals MX plus B kind of thing. So um, this right here is just a linear function that goes through the origin. Now, why is this important? Uh, well, we're going to talk about this later on um, when we talk about future, for example, and these world lines of photons. So basically, this photon, this is how it travels. So it goes, you know, in distance, it goes the same as it goes in time. You know, if it's going the speed of light, at least, that's what it does. So every one unit it goes to the right, it goes one up. One unit to the right goes one up and so on. So that's actually, it's very handy for us to do this and we don't have to scale things uh, all crazy. So we just know that, hey, if we see something that goes up at some angle of 45 degrees, we're talking about light here. So let's play around a little bit with these space-time diagrams. I put this one interested in time travel, meet here last Thursday, ha ha. So what do I mean by uh, future? I'm just trying to draw a few different things here for us. But uh, let's just say if we want to talk about, you know, what could actually be going on in your own future, like where you could move, assuming you started here and you start moving, well, since this right here is a photon, you know, this is light, you can't go faster than light. So that means your own world lives within this section right here. This is the only section where you can actually move. You cannot go into the right here, because in order to do that, you know, in order to cross this line, you'd have to go faster than light, and you can't. So basically this, this is where you, know, you could move. So in order to cross this light's world line, in other words, in other words uh, this one right here, this photon, in order to cross this, you'd have to go faster than light. You can't, so that's why this is your own future lives somewhere up here. That's assuming you started off at x equals zero. All right, well, let's look at events that might be simultaneous. What does that mean? Simultaneous means at the same time. Well, this is X. This has time. So that means I could draw, like, event A here, and I could draw, you know, event B here. And then I could say, well, events A and B, they happen at the same time. So they're simultaneous. But keep in mind, they happen at a different place. Do you notice, though? They happen, you know, here is an X, and here is a different X. So they happen at the same time, but not at the same place. Okay, so what about same location? Well, that would be two events, uh, let's say A and B, maybe this is A here, maybe this is B down here. These are two events that have the same location. Notice they happen at the same place. This is X, so they happen at the exact same value here, but they happen at different times. Okay, so let's talk about somebody maybe moving at a constant speed. Now, you don't have to necessarily start off at zero. Maybe you start off here just to show you you can actually start somewhere else too. So if I'm moving at a constant speed, keep in mind what light does. So light would still be at a 45 degree angle. So this is my, just to keep in mind, that's the kind of like my speed limit. So that's my photon. 
Okay, and that means then if I'm moving at a constant speed, maybe I move, I don't know, in this direction, like uh, this, for example. So that means that, you know, this object here is going to move at a constant speed. It's linear. Now, what if something is actually accelerating? Um, well, let's just start off. Let's assume this time we did start off at uh, this one here, so at x equals 0. And again, remember, this is our photon just for reference here. Well, if I want to be accelerating, let's think about this. Now, time goes this way, goes up. I don't want it to be linear. I want it to be accelerating, so it's going to be nonlinear. And in this case here, for every given time, I want it to go, if it accelerates, I mean, it's going to go more distance. For the same given time, goes even more. If time, it goes even more. In other words, it's going to curve like that. So this here would be something where it accelerates. So to see how the shapes of these things are here, where they start, we've got something about simultaneity. In other words, two things happening at the same time. We've got same location. We've got your future. We've talked about a lot with just these um, space-time diagrams. Now, these were simple ones. Why do I mean simple? Because there's just one. I've got another video that shows you what happens when you have two of them superposed onto each other. It looks a little bit crazy, but it, you'll see it's actually just fine.